Welcome back to Linda's Pantry. As you can see in the title, we are going to get busy today. I did a video a while back on the inventory in my extended pantry, and that's what I work out of all the time. That's how we eat. Um, I don't, I try not to buy anything that's processed by somebody else, if I can help it. Now, there are exceptions, but today we're going to go ahead and can some pears and nectarines. And <clears throat> This recipe is fantastic. So this comes out of the Ball Blue Book Preserving Guide to Home or to Preserving. It's got over, over 500 recipes, and this is the latest updated um, Ball Blue Book that's out there. And the recipes are wonderful. And then they have tips in here, and um, you know, you can on some things you can choose. Uh, whether what kind of vegetable or fruit and I mean they just give you a lot of choices so this is a recipe out of there now I'm not going to use equal parts of nectarine and pear I like this combination but I want it to be heavier on the nectarine side so I have six pounds now the recipe calls for three to four and a half pounds of pears and three to four and a half pounds of nectarines um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use all of this. Uh, follow all the instructions on how to can it and everything. And then um, instead of doing a simple syrup, you do uh, white grape juice and no sugar added. Make sure you don't use any, the one with any sugar added. And it's delicious. Trust me when I tell you. But I, when I made it the last time, I felt like I wanted less pears, if that makes sense. So we've got to get all this fruit. I just washed these. I've got to get this big bowl of nectarines washed. And we, I'm going to peel the pears and core them. And then we're going to make sure that we treat that with fruit fresh. And you can get that in your canning section. Um, I've, I believe I've got 15 pounds of nectarines. And so we should be able to stock our pantry with a lot of fruit. What do you think? <laughs> and we're going to have some of this for dessert tonight. So over a little bit of... Uh, um, a sweet shortbread instead of strawberry shortcake we're gonna have this so delicious okay so I'm gonna get to doing all that as soon as I've got all the processed d processing done for you then we'll move on to the next step all right ah, excited get your hands in there and get work so I've got my eight quart bowl here um, just about oh, right in here with the pears and I've cut them into bite-sized cubes uh, that way, if you've got any bruising or anything like that, you can get that, cut that out of there and nobody notices. And I've got this in water with the fruit fresh so they don't turn brown. Now, you want to make sure that you're using fruit that's pretty firm because if you get it overly ripe, it ends up really mushy in the jar and you end up, you might as well just do uh, applesauce type fruit sauce instead of what we're doing. So, and these nectarines are, I mean, they're... They're firm. If you left them out on the counter for a couple more days, you'd probably end up with um, something that would be suitable to eat. But, and the nice thing about nectarines is you can leave that skin on and it's going to become beautiful in the jars. So um, I like to use it instead of peaches, although you could do this very same thing with peaches. And then before I put these on the stove, because they've got to be heated through and you're doing a hot pack, um, heating that takes a lot of the air bubbles out of the fruit so you don't get as much of the fruit suspended in the jar, you know, floating, because um, that never looks as pretty as the stuff that's all the way down under the liquid. Okay, so I've got garbage right there. And that, again, is bite-sized pieces. So. You really choose, like this one I feel like is too big. You choose how big you want them. But uh, the first time I did this, I didn't even do uh, but two pints of it because I wanted to try it. And I had a couple uh, pieces of fruit around. And so uh, after that I said, oh, I'm making a huge batch because it really is delicious. So if you like these kind of videos and you like canning and you like new ideas of what you can put on your pantry shelf please go ahead and give me a thumbs up share it on your facebook page and don't forget check the links that are in the description box below because i'll have a link to uh, my all-american canners for pressure canning and i'll also have a, a link to where you can pick up maybe some jar boxes to store your jars in 
All right. And that's as easy as this is. It really isn't that, uh, it's not hard, it's just a little time consuming. But the benefits of when I'm craving something that's healthy and sweet, or I want to make a really nice dessert, quick and easy, hmm, I just go in the other room. All right, let me get the rest of these done and we'll get to getting it on the stove. And I think that we're gonna need our big stock pot. Okay guys, so, <laughs> this is my second bowl and this is an eight quart bowl. So 16, roughly 16 quarts of fruit. Um, I would bet it's closer to 14 because of the water. Now I'm gonna bring it up to temperature. You wanna make sure that you get this up to kind of a simmer where it's hot all the way through. The fruit needs to be heated all the way through. And then we can start um, with our jars. And I've got my jars in the dishwasher um, on the sanitized added heat and, and all that good stuff. Now, if you're gonna do the ball canning book recipe, it calls for five cups of the uh, white grape juice and um, no sugar added, which I said that before, but because we've got so much more, um, and this gets brought up to a boil and poured over the fruit in the hot jars. So we're gonna go ahead with about half of that. And the nice thing is my husband can have some juice. I'm not a big juice drinker um, because of the amount of sugar, but in this, you can um, take this out and actually turn it into a pie filling. So all you have to do is add some thickener and you have a delicious pie filling. Um, or like I said, you could even thicken it and add it to a trifle or um, over ice cream, oh, anything. Anyways, so let's get going with this and we'll get our jars all ready, our lids and rings and I'm gonna sterilize my equipment here and that means everything that could come in contact with the food has to be sterilized. So that's gonna go in a hot pot of boiling water for at least 10 minutes. And um, we don't boil our lids, but I do wash them really well and then bring them up to a simmer and just hot water over them to soften the plastic seal. And I'm gonna use regular button top lids today only because I might be giving some of this away and I wanna be able to sh make sure uh, I don't give a tattler lid away. All right, guys, Ooh, exciting, all right. It was a lot of work though. My fingers are all, they're kind of like little prunes. <laughs> okay. We are ready to start canning. And so I've got everything set up. I've got my hot lids. I've got my uh, fruit here. And you just bring it up to um, where it's hot all the way through. You're not really boiling it or cooking it. And it is gonna go in the water bath canner for 20 minutes for pints. It'd be 25 for quarts. So. Go ahead and do that. Get your little debubbler wand to help you pack the jars. And you want you can go within a half an inch of headspace because we're water bath canning. Kind of a rule of thumb. If it was jam, it would be a quarter of an inch of headspace. And I want uh, enough in here, but I also want the liquid to cover the fruit. So just a couple more pieces and then we can add our fruit juice, hot. Now you just bring that up to a simmer and just before it gets to a boil, you're ready to go. Go ahead and debubble while you're doing that. And let's give it a look and see how we look here. Oh, perfect. And the half inch of headspace, if you're not sure, you can get one of these debubbler wands and measure it right on, on your jar and we are perfect. So now we're gonna wipe the rim of that jar and I've got a little napkin with some vinegar on it. Wipe that rim and it's just this top rim where it connects and meets the jar or the lid that you're trying to seal on there. Grab yourself a lid and a ring, and this is how easy it is. Fingertip tight, and look how pretty. It's beautiful in the jars. So, ooh, the white pears against the uh, nectarines with the pink and peachy color, it's beautiful. 
in the canner it goes. And the canner is at about 180 degrees. So these uh, are gonna sit in a hot canner until I can start the water bath process. And we're gonna have to go in batches because this uh, 22 quart stock pot has about, um, oh, I don't know, 16 quarts of food in here. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna get to canning. Might have to wash up some quart jars. All right, away we go. I'll meet you back when we're all done. So the first batch of the nectarine and pears are done. And when you're jarring this up, you're gonna just be affected by that white grape juice. It smells so good. And the combination of the fruit. So this processed in the hot water bath canner, and that means it came up to a boil before I start the, the uh, timing. And for pints, it's 20 minutes. For quarts, it would be 25 minutes. Once you've achieved that 20 minutes, turn your canner off, take the lid off, and let this sit in the canner for five minutes. And that's really important. It lets the jars kind of come down off the angry boil, and you don't get thermal shock. Thermal shock can break your jars, um, and we don't want that. So, ooh, look at that. We do have some uh, fruit floating. It should drop back down when, because right now everything in the jar is expanded. Um, it should drop back down, but we didn't really cook the fruit thoroughly, so you're going to have some floating. Just like if you raw pack, fruit and vegetables have air in them, and I I'm okay with having a little extra syrup, <laughs> or not syrup, but juice in there. And let's see, this one's not too bad. And you wanna try not to tip your jars. This is kinda hard not to do, but try not to tip your jars because the water on the top will evaporate. And on that, see, you can see the fruit floating, but look how pretty underneath that juice is. And that's gonna be delicious. Thicken that up, oh, and put that over ice cream. I don't even eat ice cream, but I might have to start. <laughs> oh, it looks beautiful with the, the pears, the white pears and the beautiful nectarines. I truly hope this inspires you to try this. And I'm gonna bring you back when I'm done processing the rest of this fruit and we'll see exactly how much I got. And, and then I'll figure out how much it cost me. Now, I bought organic fruit and um, it's, it's not you know the peak of the season, but I wanted to give you guys all a head start because I know a lot of you have uh, fruit coming into season here pretty quick. And I wanted to give you some ideas of what you can do when that happens beforehand. All right, guys. Mm. Let's get to canning. Oh my gosh, my husband thinks I'm crazy. So <laughs> uh, that was the beeper to let me know that they could come out. They'd, they'd been resting in that uh, water bath canner after I turned it off for five minutes. And that's per the ball canning book instructions. So, and again, try not to tip your jars. Tipping your jars can actually, because the lids have not sealed down yet, um, so they're still kind of going up and down until they create that vacuum. It, if you get food or anything stuck up under there, you're not gonna get a good seal, so you really gotta be careful about that. Um, and I am I have to say I'm probably the worst about that. I wanna tip and get that water off there, but all these jars back here, all the water's already evaporated, so it will evaporate. So 20 pints of nectarines and pears. And I priced it out, and I don't factor in my jars or my lids. That, that's, that's what has to happen. Um, my jars, it's an investment that I made years ago, and so I've already, they've already paid for themselves. The uh, fruit itself, this works out to a dollar sixty-four a jar for a pint of fruit. Now that may sp sound spendy, but it, it is organic fruit. I know that I um, did all this. I put everything into it, and I'm okay with that. And I have twenty pints of fruit on my shelf. I had one pint of peaches left. And so later on in the season, when seasonal fruit really comes into play. 
I can go ahead and do that as well. Um, but for now, I'm excited to uh, get this on my shelf and know that I've got this. And like I said, you can thicken it. You can do all kinds of things with this. This, it, it just makes a wonderful addition to any meal. So I hope it inspires you. I hope that if you are thinking about jumping into the canning world, this is easy. It took some prep time, but it's super easy and it's delicious and your family will thank you for it. And you don't have to get a tin full of fruit that tastes like metal. And I really don't think that's that healthy for us. If you're gonna buy fruit um, that's been processed from a store or, you know, from a, a manufacturer, please get it in a glass jar. And so, 20 pints of fruit on my pantry shelves. I'm super excited. So I can't wait to see you next time. And please, if there's something that you would like to see me can, or you would like to see coming up, I know you guys are all screaming for garden videos and we finally just got our garden in. Our season has been way later this year than it usually is. And um, so I'm gonna do a garden tour and try to piece together a video for you. Uh, it, it, it's not been an easy start, but it, I'm not worried about it at all. We have a ton of stuff already coming up and doing very well. And so I'll bring you along for that. And I can't wait to see you next time on another delicious canning video, a recipe video. Oh, maybe I'll be doing a shout out video or a subscriber contest video like I did not too long ago. And, or, or you know what? It could be a puppy video. We have puppies coming here in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. Little German short hair pointer puppies. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Let's get cracking on something else. <laughs> Bye.